Good evening, dear learners. I'm Dr. Satish Vishwambal Lakde, and I'm working as an assistant professor of communication skills in the Department of Humanities and Sciences, Walchand Institute of Technology, Sholapur. And I welcome you all for this session on Johari window. Here's the learning outcome. At the end of this session, students will be able to improve self-awareness and develop fruitful relationships with their colleagues and team members. Now here is a question for you to think over. And the question is, do you know yourself? Now I would request you to pause this video for some time and write the answer for this question in your course journal. So you need to answer what is your strength, what is your weakness, your opportunities and your threats. So pause this video and write your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats and then you can resume the video. Welcome back. So you might have done your SWOT analysis and now you know what is your strength, your weakness, your opportunities and your threats. So let us go to the next slide. Now the question is why Johari window model? So the answer is here. One should assess oneself regularly to have a positive attitude and an effective personality. Johari's window model is a useful tool for this assessment and is being used by individuals for improving their self-awareness and developing fruitful relationships with their colleagues and team members. Thus, it is a popular and effective tool for personality development. What is Johari window model? And now let us try to understand this model. Johari's window model was developed by American psychologists Joseph Lift and Harry Ingham. Thus, the name Johari is coined from the names of Joseph and Harry. So, the term Johari is a combination of the names of Joseph and Harry. Johari's window model emphasizes and enhances soft skills, interpersonal relationships, empathy, cooperation, and intergroup development. It is therefore helpful for personal development and is also fruitful for understanding the employer-employer relationship. Johari's window model. Johari window model is referred as disclosure or feedback model of self-awareness or an information processing tool. Johari's window refers to oneself and others. Here, self indicates the subject and others are people or members of a group. This model provides information about experiences, attitude, feelings, motivation and depression of a person or group in relation to other people through four main perspectives. And so in the next slide, we'll understand what are these four main perspectives. So let us understand the four perspectives or quadrants of Johari's window. The four perspectives of Johari's window are termed as areas, regions or quadrants. So there are four areas, regions or quadrants in the Johari's window model. Each perspective represents information, feelings, etc. related to a person. It tells whether the information is known by the person and whether the information is known or not known by other members in the group. First area is called open or free area. It is also called as area of free activity. The second area or quadrant is called as blind area or blind spot. The third area is called as hidden self or hidden area. And the last area, that is the fourth area, is called as unknown self or area of unknown activity. So these are the four areas of the Johari window model. So let us understand the four quadrants of Johari window model. Now as you can see, the first area is called as the open area or the open self. The information in this area is known to self and is also known 
to others. So this is called as the open area or open self. Then the next is the blind spot or the blind area. The information in this area is not known to the self but the information in this area is known to others. So this is the blind area or the blind spot. We will come to the third area. The third area is called as the hidden self or the hidden area. The information in this area is known to the self but the information in this area is not known to others. So this is the hidden self or the hidden area. The last area is called as the area of unknown activity or unknown self. The information in this area is not known to the self as well as the information is not known to others. So these are the four areas or quadrants of the Johari window. Now let us move to the next slide. So let us revise it once again. So as I said earlier, the first area or the first quadrant is called as the open area or the open self. The information in this area is known to self and it is also known to others. The next area is called as the blind spot or the blind self. Here the information is unknown to the self but is known to others. So the information in this area is unknown to the self but known to the others and hence it is called as the blind self or the blind area. Let us come to the third area which is called as hidden self or hidden area. The information in this area is known to self but unknown to others. And the last area or the last quadrant is called as the mystery self or the area of unknown activity. The information in this area is unknown to the self as well as unknown to others and so it is termed as area of unknown activity or mystery self. So these are the four quadrants of Johari window and having understood this concept let us move to the next slide. So the first quadrant, Johari's first quadrant is called as open or free area or area of free activity. It contains complete information about a person that is his attitude, feelings, experience, knowledge, skill set, views etc. which is known by the person that is self and by the team others. The aim of any team or group should be to develop the open area for every person because while working in open area you have no inhibitions and so you are more efficient and productive and the team is also very productive. There is frank communication and cooperation as there is no mistrust, confusion and misunderstanding in the open area. Existing members of a group have larger open areas than new entrants. So this was about Johari's first quadrant. Open or free area, gradually the size of open area of a new member expands horizontally into the blind space by his her proper listening of the feedback of other group members. This is known as feedback solicitation. When a person starts disclosing his feelings, and information then the size of his open area expands vertically downwards into the hidden area. Effective leaders, managers promote the culture of open environment, positive thinking, helpful conduct, sensitive communication, feedback and knowledge dissemination within the team or organization which leads to positive development of the open area of everyone. Good leaders and organizations facilitate the development of open area. Johari's second quadrant which is called as blind area or blind spot. Johari's second quadrant is called as the blind area or blind spot. It represents what is known about a person that is subject by others in the group but the same information is not known by the subject. The subject is oblivious about this information. 
Blind area is not productive for individuals and groups. It represents ignorance about oneself or issues in which one is involved. It also includes issues that others are deliberately withholding from a person. People who have big blind area are difficult to work with. The aim should be to reduce this area by seeking or soliciting feedback about oneself from other members and responding positively to it and thereby increasing one's open area, that is increasing self-awareness. Jauhari's third quadrant, which is called as hidden self or hidden area. Jauhari's third quadrant is called hidden self or hidden area. This area represents feelings, information known to a person but is kept hidden from others or not revealed to other group members and therefore not known to other members. It may include one's fears, hidden agendas, secrets or anything that a person knows but does not want to reveal to others. Some information related to third quadrant may not have any repercussion on the work of a team or group and so it may or should remain hidden. A lot of hidden information may have a bearing on one's work performance or the entire team's performance. Therefore, it is better to place that information in the open area. Sharing of information is called as self-disclosure or exposure process which helps in increasing the open area. By sharing information about ourselves with others, we reduce our hidden area and increase our open area and thereby bring trust, understanding, cooperation, productivity in our team or group. Jauhari's fourth quadrant, unknown self or area of unknown activity. This area represents information about an individual's latent abilities, attitude and feelings which is unknown to the individual as well as people around him or the team members. Bigger unknown areas are more prevalent in the younger people who have less work experience. This area can be reduced by self-discovery or by learning from keen observation of your personality by others in various situations. Counseling can also unravel many unknown issues which could be done either by one person or by a group. So these are the references for this particular work and I wish you a happy learning. Thank you so much.